सो फ्रेंड दिस इज द एयर कंप्रेसर पार्ट टू वीडियो सो आई है टू कवर ऑल द क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू द एयर कंप्रेसर टॉपिक सो द क्वेश्चन आर एज फॉलोज वॉट इज टेंडम टाइप एयर कंप्रेसर मटीरियल्स और पार्ट ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर वाई प्लेट टाइप वॉल्व आर यूज टाइप्स ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर वॉल ओवरहॉलिंग ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर वेल लीक टेस्ट ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर वेल सेफ्टी डिवाइसेस ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर वाई रिलीफ वॉल ऑफ फर्स्ट स्टेज एंड सेकेंड स्टेज आर लिफ्टिंग हाउ टू स्टार्ट एयर कंप्रेसर मैनुअली हाउ टू चेक एफिशेंसी ऑफ एयर कंप्रेसर वॉल रनिंग हाउ विल यू चेक लो लिप ऑयल प्रेशर ट्रिप एंड हाई एयर टेम्परेचर ट्रिप पर्पज ऑफ अनलोडर purpose and location of fusible plug so these are the questions which i will try to cover in my this video so this is the air compressor part 2 video and in air compressor part 1 video so that video covers all the questions which are in this list so now moving towards my part 2 video so this is a tandem type air compressor and the tandem type of piston is used for double acting compressors we have one side of the piston might be acting as first stage and the other side might be final stage or the second stage so in tandem type air compressor every time suction and discharge takes place in every cycle so the process is same first the air is entered from the inlet filter from the atmosphere then it is compressed and passed through the intercooler from which the air temperature is lowered and then it is passed to the second stage and in second stage it is compressed and passed through the after cooler from where again the temperature is decreased and that is received in the receiver so this is the process and there are some safety devices that i will talk in my another slides now this is the list of the parts of the compressor which they are made up of so once go through this sometimes surveyor ask about that what is liner made up of or piston of the air compressor is made up of so that time you can answer it easily so now moving towards my next question Why plate type valve are used on marine air compressors? So the valves on most of air compressors are plate type with concentric rings. So the advantage of this type of valves are fast checking due to being lightweight, small distances to travel, efficient seal created, efficient at stopping the delivered air back into the cylinder on intake stroke, no inertia due to the weight, excellent air flow for a small area, valve impact limited due to small movement saving the seat. and the wall damage is less so that is why we are using this plate type because it is having many advantage over other types so another question is asked in our mmt that what are the types of air compressor valves so there are basically three types of valve plate type feather type and channel type so now talking about plate type valve so surveyor sometimes ask about plate type valve because this is only used in most of the air compressors so these are the plates which the valve is made up of so sometimes surveyor also ask about the name of the parts of this plate type valve so you have to tell the names like of a plate spring plate chamber plate valve plate and valve seat and he also asked to explain about the function of these plates so the valve seat is with the center bolt and a locating pin and has a numerous concentric circles which form a perfect ceiling with the valve plate so this forms a perfect ceiling for the plate type valve and damper plate mitigates the adverse effect of flutter as well as constant high speed impact so the damper plate is used to damp the adverse effect of the fluttering of the plate type valve and this buffer plate is situated at the other end it provides support to spring plates which rest against it so this buffer plate is used only to support the spring plates which are in this plate type valve so only the surveyor ask about this damper plate and the buffer plate so i had defined only the damper and the buffer plate so now moving towards our second type of valve so in this valve we are having suction and discharge on a single plate as you can see marked with an arrow and on suction and discharge both side we are having one one strip which is riveted so this is a strip which we are seeing this is the discharge side and the suction side is also same we are having a riveted strip on that side also so now you have to imagine that the suction side valve strip is at the down side and the discharge side valve strip is at the top which you are seeing so whenever the compressor will take the suction a vacuum will be created to which the strip will provide a space to let the air go inside the cylinder and when the air will be compressed so this discharge side valve will provide a space to let the air go out to the receiver side so surveyor only ask about the construction that we are having a discharge and a suction valve on a single plate 
with a riveted strip on both side so this is the simple construction and i am not having any practical animation video for this if i will get it i will upload it on the channel marine help board and now moving towards our third type wall channel type so in this type of wall we are having some channels made up of some strip plates so Sever only asked about all the walls constructions and uh, all the names so he never asked about the working he only asked about the working of that feather type so these were the all the types of wall now moving towards my next question so sometimes a question is asked that what is the material used for construction of the wall part so you can tell about this the wall body is made up of carbon steel well plate alloy steel and plate springs spring steel so you can note it down and you can tell to the server whenever this question is asked so now moving next overhauling of a air compressor valve so this is an important topic to overhaul the plate type valve we have to loosen the castle nut by using suitable spanner take out the split pin remove the nut washer remove the buffer plate remove three spring plates then remove damper plates then remove wall plate and the guide washer remove locking pin overhauling this plate type valve is not difficult because only we have to remove and loosen the locking nut and then one by one we have to remove all the plates which are located one by one after overhauling we have to check the plate for the proper seating if the wall plate doesn't seat properly it is left by a coarser and a finer paste making a figure of eight on a true surface plate a figure of eight is made because an even and continuous lapping can be done only by a figure of eight now once our overhauling has been done all the plates have been removed now we have to check that all the plates are sitting properly if they are not sitting properly so the seal will be not created properly so for that we have to lap it with the help of first coarser and then finer paste and we have to make a figure of eight so this figure is used because a continuous lapping can be done with the help of this figure eight so once we have finished up with this overhaul of air compressor so now we have to box back this valve to make it working when boxing back of air compressor valve that plate type valve is done put the valve and tighten the nut after that turn the compressor down to check valve is freely opening without any problem or not with the help of a brass rod so we will take a brass rod and with that we will check whether the valve is opening properly or not after that we will check the leak that the valve is leaking or not for that we have to fill the diesel in the same position just to make sure that the valve is okay or it is leaking now at the same position we will fill a diesel oil from one side and we will check the other side of whether the diesel oil is coming on the another side or not if it is not coming then our valve is properly sealing it is not leaking and then we will remove the diesel after making sure that everything is fine and then we will put the gasket of the same thickness and we will box back the air compressor valve and the cylinder head so friends this was the full overhauling and the boxing back of the plate type air compressor valve so whenever this question is asked you have to tell full process and whenever you are asking about the leak test then you have to tell this diesel method maybe friends you will be thinking that i am going too fast in my every question so i go fast to cover maximum questions in a single video and i know that a single minute is important for you for the class for oral so i try to cover all the questions as much as i can now moving towards our another important topic safety devices in air compressors so this is the most important topic of the air compressor so first one is the relief valve fitted to the discharge side of every stage to release the excess pressure developed inside it the setting of the lifting pressure increases after every ascending stage so this is a two stage air compressor a tandem type air compressor so in this i will show you the safeties and i am explaining i will do it after so we are having two relief valves as you can see at the discharge side of low pressure type and discharge of high pressure type so this is one relief valve and this is second relief valve and both are having different setting this is having low pressure setting and this is having high pressure setting second safety is the bursting disc fitted on the cooler shells at the water side and it is a copper disc and it is a safety disc which bursts out when the pressure exceed over the predetermined value so the second safety is the bursting disc so it is present on the water side you can see that it is present on the water side and it is on low pressure stage it's not present on the high pressure stage because 
इफ देर इज एनली लीकेज इन द ट्यूब्स ऑफ द आफ्टर कूलर और इंटर कूलर सो आफ्टर कूलर एंड इंटर कूलर सो द एयर विल ट्राई टू गो टूवर्ड्स वाटर साइड and this high pressure air will act on the water side and you know that water is incompressible so due to which this bursting disc will burst so this is a safety and it is not at high pressure side because high pressure side and low pressure side both are having a single water connection both are having a single water connection and due to which the same pressure will act on the water side and it will burst out so this is what the second safety Now moving towards our third safety fusible plug it is fitted under side of the pipe between relief valve and the air bottle so in some compressor it is fitted on the top and some it is fitted on the under side mostly it is fitted under side and it is located at the discharge side of the compressor it fuses if the air temperature is higher than the operational temperature the fusible plug is made up of material which melts at a high temperature so the third safety is our fusible plug So the melting point it should be not more than 121 degree centigrade. So it is almost 105, and it is present between non-return valve and the relief valve of second stage. So this is also sometimes asked by the surveyor the location of the fusible plug. That I will cover in my next slide, and all the explanation I will cover in my next slide. But just I am showing you the safety is where they are present. So the fourth safety is delivery air high temperature alarm. on after cooler outlet so the maximum setting is 93 degree centigrade so once the air temperature reaches 93 degree centigrade it will give an alarm and trip the air compressor now another safety is the temperature alarm 93 degree maximum so this is a air temperature alarm so it is also fitted at the discharge side of the second stage so that high temperature air is not going to the now moving towards our fifth safety Lube valve low pressure alarm and trip. If the lube valve pressure goes lower than the normal, the alarm is sounded followed by a cut off trip signal to avoid damage to bearing and the crank shaft. So this safety is provided due to whenever there is low lube valve pressure. So first it will give alarm and trip because if there is no lube valve low pressure alarm, so maybe the bearing may damage or the crank shaft may be heat up because there is no lubrication. So this is what low lube valve pressure alarm and trip is for. Now moving towards our sixth safety, cooling water high temperature trip. So, if the intercoolers are choked or the flow of water is less, then the air compressor will get overheated. To avoid this situation, high water temperature trip is activated, which cuts off the compressor. So this is also an important safety. So you can imagine now that if there is less amount of water, if air intercooler or after cooler is choked and there is less amount of water, so the cooling of air is not proper. So to avoid that. there is water high temperature trip because if there is less amount of water it will heat up easily and it will trip the air compressor now seven safety is the water no flow trip so it is easily understandable that whenever there is no flow of water so the air temperature will increase so if there is no water flow then it will trip the air compressor so this is also an important safety and the eight safety is the motor overload trip if the current taken by the motor during running or starting is very high then there is a possibility of damage to the motor so this overload trip thus is fitted to avoid that situation so whenever we are running the compressor so the current if it is taken more and it is high so it is a possibility that it can damage the motor so that's why this overload trip is provided and the last one is the moisture drain valve or also known as unloader and it is fitted at the each cooler side drain or we know it as the unloader so unloader is also fixed on this drain side so it is used to remove the moisture and run the compressor in the unloader condition at the time of starting and whenever we are stopping so these were the some safeties of the air compressor now hope friends you are clear about all the safety devices and their locations and friend these were all the safeties which are mostly asked in our md orals so i have tried to cover all the questions related to the safeties now moving towards my next question now this question is related to the double shooting part and this question has been asked many a times by the surveyor in our oral so the first question is relief valve of first stage is lifting so it is lifting because spring of relief valve is malfunctioning 
that is by lifting at less pressure or discharge valve of the first stage is not opening or intercooler air passage is blocked or choked or suction valve of second stage is leaking so it is leaking that's why the high pressure air, air is coming back and it is lifting the relief valve or water inside the compression chamber due to crack in the jacket and water is leaking inside thus you know water is incompressible that's why the pressure is high and that is the reason the first stage relief valve is lifting now moving towards our second one why relief valve of second stage is lifting so the relief valve is malfunctioning so that is why it is lifting at the setting pressure lower than the setting pressure or main discharge valve so the air bottle is closed so main discharge valve is closed so the pressure is not releasing means the air is not going inside the receiver so it is lifting discharge valve plate and the spring are worn out valve is in closed position so maybe valve is in closed position that is why it is lifting blockage in the after cooler air passage so there is blockage in the after cooler that is why air is not going inside the receiver or not going forward so it is lifting water inside the compression chamber due to crack in jacket so same as the for the first stage so water is inside and it is incompressible so it is lifting because of the high pressure so these are the points which we have to tell for these both questions now moving towards my next one so these all questions are not asked but you should know because maybe there is a chance that they can ask that first stage discharge pressure is high why so first stage discharge pressure is low why so so you have to tell all these points whichever i have mentioned in the list and another one is that second stage discharge pressure is high why so second stage discharge pressure is low so these all conditions why these conditions are happening so there is a chance that the surveyor may ask you in the order so i have provided you in my video so now moving towards my next one how to start the air compressor manually on the ships so for starting the manual process we have to change the switch to manual position on the switchboard so there is a switch for the manual and the auto changeover on the switchboard so you have to change it towards the manual position after this the second step is check the level sump level and the condition so we have to check the sump level whether it is okay to start the air compressor so the third step is open the moisture drain valve so this we have to open manually but when the compressor is running automatically so the unloader with the help of unloader the moisture drain takes place so before starting we have to open this moisture drain valve to let the air compressor run in unloaded condition so fourth step is open the compressor discharge valve and charging valve of air bottle so we have to open both the valve because we have to let the air go into the receiver then fifth step is open cooling water system valves so now we have to let the water go inside the air compressor so this water is squared in the intercooler and after cooler to cool the air sixth step is turn the compressor flywheel by hand almost one turn start the motor after draining the moisture set the drain valve so now we will start the air compressor and once the draining of the moisture has taken place we will shut the drain valve then check the motor ampere is consumed check the pressure cage readings so it should be normal as while it is in the running when it is running automatically then frequently drain the moisture so we have to drain the moisture frequently when charging is full open drain valve and stop the compressor now we know that our receiver is full now we have to stop the compressor so before stopping the compressor we have to drain the compressor so that all the moisture is drained out and we will do it with the help of opening the drain valve so this is what we have to do to start the compressor manually and stop it manually now the compressor is in running condition so the surveyor will ask you that how will you check the compressor efficiency during running the efficiency is checked by filling time with the previous record and also check the first stage discharge pressure if compressor efficiency is lower compressor will run longer and compressor temperature will rise so we have to check the filling time and we have to measure it with our previous record how much time it was taking earlier to fill the compressor and we have to check all the discharge pressure and if it is taking more time so the compressor efficiency is lower it is simple now the second is first stage and the second stage pressure cage must be correct and stable so we have to check the first stage and the second stage pressure gate that should be correct and stable as per the earlier reading no escape of air from suction filter so we will check the suction filter so no escaping of the air should be there if the escaping is there so maybe the valve is leaking 
intercooler and after cooler outlet air temperature should not be high so the intercooler and after cooler outlet temperature air should not be high we have to check the temperature if open drain wall nothing can be found so when you are opening the receiver drain wall so there should be no moisture or any oil content should be there sixth one is low lube oil consumption so the lube oil consumption should be normal as per it is happening it should be not more so the last method is oily air mixture must not blow out from breather pipe so as you are knowing that there is a breather pipe in the air compressor crankcase so the oily air mixture should not blow out through the breather pipe so these are the methods by which we can check the compressor efficiency while running so you have to tell all these points whenever the question is has been asked to you by the surveyor so now moving towards our next one how will you check out the low lube oil pressure cutout or high air temperature treatment compressor so for checking low lube oil oil pressure cutout there are two methods we can check it by lowering the pressure setting or we can use hand pump and then try to reduce the pressure by releasing the pressure and at the same time to isolate the main system that at what pressure the compressor will trip so these are the two methods by which we will check the low lube oil pressure cutout so now moving towards our air high temperature cutout so for checking air high temperature trip just take out the sensor from the line and put it in hot water and at the same time check the temperature of water with the help of thermometer that at what temperature it will trip the compressor so for air high temperature cutout we have to take out the sensor and we have to put it into the bowl of a hot water or something in which the hot water is there and we will continuously check the temperature of this hot water at what temperature this air high temperature cutout takes place so the question is purpose of unloader valve and the moisture drain valve in air compressor so at the starting this valve must be opened this reduced the starting torque for the machine and clear out any accumulated moisture and oil in the system so we are using this unloader valve because at the starting the torque is high due to which the current is also high so maybe the motor will be overloaded and the burning will take place so to reduce the starting torque we are using this unloader and it also helps to clear the moisture and the oil from the system now moving towards my next one where is the feasible plug fitted and its purpose so the feasible plug is fitted under side of the pipe between relief valve and the air bottle so this i have showed in my safety part and it is fitted to release the compressed air in the event of abnormally high compressed air temperature and feasible plug melts at 105 degrees centigrade and release all the content of the air so the summary of this feasible plug is that uh, it is fitted between the relief valve and the air bottle so this i have showed in my safety devices part and it is fitted because sometimes if high compressed air is there and the temperature is high so this feasible plug will melt in itself and it will release all the air content in the atmosphere and this melts at around 105 degrees centigrade so all these questions are asked and friends this ends the air compressor part 2 video and i have covered all these questions provided in the list and you should also watch my air compressor part 1 video so that video covers all the questions provided in this list and i have uploaded it on the morin headboard and i will provide you the link of that video so friends if this video was helpful please like and share the video and subscribe the channel morin headboard